In today's video, we talk metabolism and calories burned when you resistance train. What's going on guys? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and this is Stephen Bogrand from ProPhysique.com. That's right. Stephen now works for me as a coach because he's awesome. He's been working for me for over a year. Helped me with everything from my clothing, weights before dates, TeamProPhysique.com if you're interested. Um, but also things like my bodybuilding show, uh, just around the house, helping me keep up with the gym. You know, even helps out with like day-to-day -day stuff in life. So he's been awesome to have around. But I gradually, gradually kind of introduced him to like my coaching style. He actually worked with me. And um, this year kind of reached a breaking point and Steven expressed an interest in doing some coaching. So we've gradually been getting you some clients right. and it's going well. Going well. So uh, he's, he's been really excited about the progress his clients have made. And um, I see the fire's been lit and he's excited because I'll, I'll be honest, like coaching, it sounds nice. You know, you get to work at home, but it's not for everybody. So I think with Steven, uh, there's definitely potential there for greatness and he's almost done with his, well I don't say almost done, but you're in your final year yes. of your master's degree. Yep. So he is actually in the master's program at USF where Lauren got her master's degree. So under Bill Campbell, so lots of cool stuff going on there, which we can do in future videos. And so what I wanted to do was um, give Steven kind of a platform to talk about some stuff that interests him. So I've had him kind of write down ideas. Yeah and thoughts on, um, on research and stuff that he's studying because I know much like myself you know when you come across stuff in a book that you feel kind of applies to like what we do it's cool to talk about it right so why don't you talk about how that idea came to your mind for today's video so a lot of what I was thinking about today <clears throat> was I actually had a question on one of the YouTube videos that we had done prior and somebody just asked about you know how many calories do I burn when I actually weight train yeah um, and there's not a ton of research on it, but there's sure. there's a little bit and so I just thought it was a really good topic okay. um, It's one of those things like we know that body composition isn't just about the calories that you burn when you exercise sure. um, And it's not just about how much you eat or how much you don't eat right. but There's a lot of different facets to it and I think that resistance training Actually has multiple benefits that we see especially when it comes to body composition and staying healthy long term. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a very interesting topic to me because when he mentioned it, I thought, hmm, I don't really know the answer to that, and I don't know how he would quantify it because there's so many variables and like training styles, you know, uh, time training, you know, there's a, there's a difference if someone's been training for 20 years versus for, for six months, right? So why don't you talk about um, what's on the board behind us and kind of explain uh, what the value is in it. Okay, so there are two studies here. And so on the first study over here, which was from 2010, uh, what they did was they compared three different types of training and then they used heart rate as well as other metabolic calculations to determine how many calories these people burned yeah. on average per minute during their exercises. So the normal thought process is that uh, resistance training actually burns less calories than traditional endurance training. Sure. Uh, this study actually showed that that might not be true. So what you saw was uh, moderate intensity endurance training. So actually Which going kind of hard. So moderate intensity endurance training was your highest, and they burned on average 20.7 calories per minute. Okay. Now there was no st scientifically significant difference here. At 1884 for a circuit style resistance training. Okay. Now both of these were a little bit higher of an intensity. Um, the circuit style never went past 70% of one RM. And then this one was up to 90% of VO2 max, so very, very hard for yeah. some of your intervals. Um, traditional endurance training, no higher than 70%, so very moderate at most. Okay. Um, way down here at 13.28 calories per minute. Okay, so my question would be, a lot of the value in training doesn't happen during the training session. Correct. Right? We're talking about the ex excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, or EPOC, right. which basically means your body is creating a, like an oxygen deficit while you train, right? Because we know the initial training is anaerobic, right? So, why don't we talk about this study? Because this one is the one that really interests me, right? So this study was done in 2015, so it's a little bit more recent, and what they looked at was your BMR. 
So that is the amount of calories that you burn just at rest doing nothing. Yeah. So they put people that had not weight trained in at least a year. Okay. They put them through three days a week, very moderate, like pretty easy weight training program. Okay. And then they looked at their BMR nine months later. Okay. And so obviously within each person there's a di little bit of a variability, but there was a pretty significant increase in each individual's BMR. Uh, oh, yeah. So it ranged up to about 290 to 300 calories for the change in BMR in a nine month. So that's my say, all right, 300 calories, what is that? That's, you know, a protein bar. But we're talking about 300 calories every single day. Right. So you're now burning an extra protein bar or whatever it might be right. every single day. 2,100 calories a week. Doing nothing. Right. Doing, your, your body has just changed. So. Right. And that's interesting because it's a nine month study. So what? So let's talk a little bit about uh, muscle tissue and how it impacts metabolism. Okay. So how does, how does having muscle change? So when you have muscle, moving muscle costs calories. Right. Um, so we like to call it a metabolically active tissue. Yeah. Um, fat just kind of sits there. It still excretes hormones, but if you're going through your day having extra fat, whereas it may add more weight to your body, doesn't necessarily burn calories in and of itself. It's just an energy source. Right. Yeah. So it, it's an energy store. However, muscle, yeah. every time you move, you're recruiting muscle fibers. So you're expending calories just to have that. And we also know that just obviously having more muscle, being in the gym, when you do muscle damage, it yeah. costs calories to rebuild that muscle. Right. Well, so my basic premise, and I think it kind of fits with this model, is um, if you want to like look better and feel better in general, um, it's great to be on a diet. Right. But it's even better to be on a diet with a resistance training program and some cardio. Correct. When you start to add those three things up, you get a one plus one equals three effect, or one plus one plus one equals five. It's not just the simple adding of one thing. So, um, yeah, I find it interesting um, that you can actually change your basal metabolic rate. I think I eat more food now than I've ever eaten and I maintain a leaner physique. Of course, training consistently for the last 10 years and being a gym rat for more than 20 years has probably changed like how my body operates. Right. Um, but I, I just, I think it's interesting that we can apply this to anyone. It can, you can start at any point. You can change your body composition. You can change how your body kind of operates. Right. And what you actually saw in some of these studies is that people lost fat mass. Because yeah. a lot of times we look at weight and we say we want to lose weight. Right. We don't just want to lose weight. We want to improve our body composition. We want to lose fat. Yeah. Um, so they lost fat mass, even if it was a minimal. Yeah. But they also gained muscle mass while they do it. So even though that their weight changed in a way that a lot of people might be confused about or think is bad. Right. Um, it was actually a very good positive change for them. Right. Yeah, there, there can be a negative association with the scale not changing during if your goal is to get leaner, but um, that's where we start to look at things like body composition, how your clothes are fitting, are people walking up to you and say, what are you doing differently? Um, the scale is dangerous in that regard that you can kind of give it too much power because you associate the number on the scale with success when it's not always going to actually measure the success that you're having in the long run. Um, so I think it's it's just very important to pay attention to the overall health picture. Right? Absolutely. And so our updates that we give our clients are not just a scale number. We're talking about measurements, talking about performance in the gym, we're talking about body composition. Um, you know, sometimes pictures tell a story that the scale does not tell. Absolutely. All right, guys. I want to thank Stephen for uh, for this today. It was a great topic and something that I was um, I was very curious about. And uh, you know, he backed it up with a little bit of research. And I think uh, you know, there's probably going to be some more good research in the future because I think as our society has changed as a whole and obesity becomes uh, more and more of an epi epidemic, I think uh, resistance training and just being more physically active is a huge reason why people are just. Um, unable to maintain a lower body composition. You know, we want to point at food all the time, but you know, if someone's hyperactive or very active, oh yeah, diet, you know, can be a lot less lenient, a lot more lenient, and still you can maintain a very good body composition, um, as witnessed by my video where I ate fast food every day and I am still not fat. So, <laughs> all right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Thank you, Stephen, and uh, we will talk to you tomorrow.
I myself 